Alrighty, so different aircraft, but we're going to continue this pre-flight back at the tail. Uh, this aircraft is just out of overhaul. It's not quite done, so little stuff like um, zip ties aren't completely tight right now. Um, so this is your tail rotor gearbox assembly. You can see the shaft comes out of the gearbox or down the tail boom. There's an inspection or sight glass like right here, and you can see if you turn the blades, there's four bolts attach the gear shaft or drive shaft to the tail rotor gearbox. You can just do that all the way around. This isn't on a pre-flight checklist, at least from Robinson, but it's something good to make sure everything is tight. You, this is the top of the tail rotor gearbox attachment point to the tail boom. You've got safety wires right there, attachment bolt, safety wire some more. There's safety wires all over this guy. This is the filler slash breather tube hole that uh, you can add um, add gearbox fluid to. Safety wire from the top down to the side glass. You can see it, it's in the tightening position. There's also a torque stripe there. Check out the fluid level. It's right in the middle of the side glass. It's very good. Come over on this side. There's some more safety wire. See this chip or this uh, plug with all the wires going to it? That is your tail rotor chip light detector and drain hole for the gearbox. If any metal makes contact with that magnet, it grounds the circuit and um, then off we go and the, the tail rotor gearbox chip light comes on on the dash. Now you can see there's just a little wet. Um, I'll have them check that out. We're still putting the first five hours on it and then we're going to do a flush. So that's going to be coming off again anyway. So This is a put push-pull tube that comes down the tail boom. As you can see the jam nuts there, pal nut, and uh, of course your famous rod end. Looking to make sure it twi twists but no lateral or vertical movement. Uh, let's see, you got some more wiring harnesses or wiring connectors here. Torque straps are on the empennage. Those two bolts right there is what holds the vertical and horizontal stabilizer on. That is it. Just two bolts. So make sure those are on there nice and tight. Alright, coming across, there's your push-pull tube, your rod end. This is this L-shaped bracket here. That's another bell crank, your tail rotor bell crank. Check. Make sure all the torque stripes are there. Pal nuts are firmly in place. And this is your bearing. So, so to check the tail rotor bell crank, we already checked the rod end for a looseness. It should have full travel, no binding, and it shouldn't be sloppy. It'll pivot here as a result of it being loose up on the pitch control bearing. Alright, so coming around, you have more safety wires. Here's your uh, tail rotor drive shaft. This is your tail rotor control right here. This has a quarter inch limitation on it. So basically that's saying that this thing can move not really moving right yeah a little bit it, it can move laterally along this shaft a quarter inch of play and that's check it check for leaks right there coming out of that um, the shaft hole out of the gearbox we are gonna look for leaks on this plug which there's a little fluid I'll have them look at it also uh, oftentimes the fluid will come down and come out one of these uh, uh, seams here here's your teletemp for your tail rotor gearbox Come around, check the torque stripes. Here's your tail rotor pitch links. Once again, you're checking for the twist, no lateral or vertical movement. Here is your elastomeric bearing. And that's basically what holds this tail rotor in place. Um, the old the betas, the old betas had just a teeter, teeter hinge. So now they use this rubber to keep it in place and you're just checking and make sure there's no cracks Make sure that bolt's nice and tight. Make sure the rubber in here is good because if this thing starts flapping, you want to make sure it's not making um, uh, contact with the metal there. Here's your blade. We're going to inspect the blades. You're looking on the leading edge primarily on the 22. Cracks, nicks, chips. Helps if this thing was a little, a little buggy right now. I should have cleaned it. Um, on the 44, not the 22, they had some problems with the trailing edge. 
crack. What you're going to do, use your hand, place it right here, not on the blade itself, and now you're going to inspect this blade. So same process. All right, so coming down the tail boom, here's my little stinger, my danger sign. Taking all the rivets once again. Get a good glare going down the tail boom here. Of course, we did the hand check. Here's your three attachment points on this side. There's two on the other side, three on this side. Check the rivets out. There's no bending. None of the rivets are working themselves out. Here's the little push-pull tube. Except for it's not a push-pull tube. It's just stabilizing the uh, upper bearing. Make sure the torque straps are good. Wiring harness is properly secured. Coming on down. Get a good look in there. and Look how clean that is. All right, fan shroud on this side. Check all of the screws. Make sure all of them are nice and tight. Coming down here. I wonder if this thing's been run any. <laughs> Here's your uh, lower bearing teletemp, left side. Your lower sheaf with the belts on them. Here's our ring gear, which is what the starter engages on. Make sure there's no teeth missing. The alternator with the belt on it. Here's the um, uh, cooling hose comes off the, the shroud down to the back of the alternator. Make sure that's on there nice and tight. And this is what an engine should look like with five hours on it right here. Once again, check for safety wires. Coming on down and check the oil right there. There's magneto, oil lines. Check the lower frame. There's your engine mounts with the bushings, rubber bushings. Coming on down. Good. There's our gas glitter, which is where we can sump our fuel. That's our lowest point on the fuel system right there. Looks good. Coming all around. Here's a manifold pressure line coming off of cylinder number three. Uh, let's see. This is a beta two, so there's no safety wire on the throttle linkage. Uh, make sure oftentimes you'll find that fuel will be on the top. If the carburetor's going bad, fuel will actually rest on the top of that breather box. So we check the engine left side. Well, it's actually the right side of the engine, left side of the aircraft. Lower frame. You'll find cracks right here if there's any hard landings, most likely. Coming on down, check the welds, check the joints, the attachment points. Make sure there's nice torque stripes on there. Not, everything's nice and tight. No corrosion, no rust, no nicks, no dings. Everything looks good. So coming down the skid, once again, you want to check the lower portion of the skid. Go all the way down, check the skid shoes. There's three. One at this strut. Walking down, there's one going to be on the bottom. I'll show you. One right there, and one out towards the top. So one, two, and then there's number three behind the wheel. So just check all your rivets. This is where your, your main tank is right here. All these screws, this is what holds the panel on. Makes sure it all on nice and tight. Check the bottom of the aircraft while you're down here. Make sure it's nice and clean, all the screws are in. Um, aircraft will tell you a lot before something goes wrong. So if you never check the bottom, then, well, it can be leaking a lot and, you know, blowing it off and just, you know, check the bottom of the aircraft. Your left, red, here's your red left position light right here. Around. Check all your screws on the windshield. Landing lights, make sure they work. Here's your fresh, this is on the front of the aircraft, this is your fresh air vent. All this is is a, a door that opens up right there and it, basically a ram air into the, into the cockpit. And you're good to go. So here's your infamous string, trim strings. Continue on up. Let's go check out the mast. Rotor head.